Dying Christ destroyed our death. Rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Martha McGruden Doolin put on Christ. So in Christ may Martha be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Martha. May we come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace, and in pain we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, and death and resurrection. At this time, I invite everyone present to join as we sing hymn number 367, He Touched Me. Thank you. God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than you are to pray. You know our needs before we ask, and you know our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. When our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that in living or dying, our life may be in you and that nothing in life or death can separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and who now rest for their labor. We thank you, especially now, O oh God, for the life of Martha Magruder Doolin, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To her and to all in your presence, O oh God, grant your peace.
Let your perpetual light shine upon her. O God, and help us to believe in the place where we have not yet seen, that your presence may lead us throughout all of our years and bring us at last to be with her in the joy of your home, not made with human hands, but eternal in the heavens through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to listen as we have the reading today from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite Sally Magruder, or as known as BAM for many of us, to give us a few words today. Good morning. I am Sally Magruder, um, the, and I had the blessing of being the niece of Martha Magruder Doolin, the matriarch of our clan. If you never had the chance to meet Aunt Martha, she was a perfect example of a Southern belle. She was gracious, she was kind, she never met a stranger, and she genuinely cared about others. She was born just after the Depression When much of the country was still struggling, she told me once that as an adult, she realized just how fortunate she and my daddy were and had been to have the education and many opportunities afforded to them. And it wasn't something that she took for granted. And she was very, she admired that very much about our grandparents. She was lovingly nicknamed Sister thy granddaddy, whom she absolutely adored. Sister had her first beau, I think at the age of 13, is that right? Well, his name was Luther B. Otkin, and Luther B. is now 91 or 92 years old, lives in South Carolina, has called me several times and asked me about how his, the love of his life is. So to this day, she still She still sparks it for him. She had many bows and made quite the impression on the men at all the dances. Daddy once said that, or many times said, that Martha was by far the best dancer in all the Delta. Aunt Martha had a unique and special Southern drawl. No one could ask for a glass of water quite like Aunt Martha and make it sound as loving and charming. Her faith and her family were the utmost important to her. She had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and was a firm believer in the power of prayer. When I would ask her to pray about something or we would talk about it, rarely did she ever fail me that she would not follow up with me and asked me about it. She prayed for her family, especially those grands, better known as her hearts. Whether she could be at maybe a band performance or a a dance or one of the plays or musicals, she was there in spirit cheering Courtney and Garrett on. I rarely saw her when she wasn't smiling and I so absolutely loved her and, I, and felt that love from her all my life. 
This is um, something I found in my jewelry armoire this week. This is um, in the olden days. When you were born, a baby was given a silver cup, sterling silver cup with your monogram. Well, this special cup was given to me by Aunt Martha. Very few, 60 years ago this August. <laughs> but I looked up the spiritual meaning of silver. And it represents hope, unconditional love, sensitivity, and kindness. All the things she was. Adele and Marty, she was so proud of you. And I know you know that and you feel that. Her love and devotion was endless. The love and care you gave her was a beautiful testimony of the way you were raised, and she absolutely adored you. You know, when you're young, you think you have forever to accomplish all you hope and dream of, all of what you hope to become, when you're young, you feel you have forever to make memories with those that you love. But when you're older and wiser, you realize time is kind of fleeting. The accomplishments, the trophies, having the biggest or the best, none of that matters. It's what you make, the memories that you make with those that you love. Choose kindness, mercy, Grace, make a difference in someone's life. Be the Christ they may have never experienced. Aunt Martha leaves that legacy, and I sure hope to follow in her footsteps. Thank you. What a beautiful reflection. Thanks, Pam. Our epistle reading today will be coming from Romans, the 8th chapter, and it'll be verses 31 through 39. I invite you to listen as the word is read. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword... As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join us as we sing hymn number 77, How Great Thou Art. I walk. 
thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sinks my soul my Savior God to me how great standing for our gospel lesson. We're going to be reading selected verses from John chapter 14. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there ye may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also shall live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. It's interesting when you look in the Bible, um, God in his creative process in Genesis 1 and 2 is always so interesting to me because you see God in Genesis 1 and 2 establishing so many things. He establishes the laws of gravity and all the stuff of the cosmos. He speaks light into an existence and he, he speaks animals into existence and life itself into his existence. You see God in his creative ability making everything the best because it's interesting in Genesis 1 as you read he'll create something and then he'll say the scripture says and it was good and it was good and it was good over and over and over again Do we get to the creation of Adam and Eve and then God makes Adam and then he says it was very good. But then it's interesting in, in Genesis 2 if Genesis 1 creates this, this cosmic image of a creating God speaking life into existence, Genesis 2 gives us this God who is personal. And we see in Genesis 2 it says that God noticed that Adam was lonely. So this very God who spoke the laws of physics into his existence, this cosmic God, then said, well, bless his heart. He's lonely. Bless him. And we see him make Eve. And so this cosmic God that makes everything, the first institution that this God created 
was the family. Adam and Eve, and then their children. He didn't make the church first, as great as the church is. He didn't make sports teams first, as great as sports teams are. He didn't make any of these things first. He made the family. That's got to mean something, y'all. Then when we look at Jesus, his life, of all the ways that God could have sent his son to the earth, what did he choose? A humble family. A mother, Mary, and Joseph, his earthly father. Of all the institutions that Jesus could have been born into, he was not born into wealthy royalty or military conquerors. He was born into a humble Jewish Judean family with home in the humble town of Nazareth. That's got to mean something, y'all. And our Lord... When he was dying upon the cross, he looked, he said all the famous words, it is finished, I thirst. But one of the last things that Jesus did before he drew his last breath was he looked to Mary and said, Mother, it's your son. He looked to John and said, Son, this is your mother. Before he died, was resurrected, the last thing Jesus did was he took care of his mama. That's got to mean something, y'all. Family matters. Family matters. Of all the gifts that God has given to us, outside of our salvation, there's no greater gift that God has given to us than the gift of family. And those of you who knew Miss Martha know there was no one who better exemplified or lived out the virtue of family than her. There's no one who built a family better than her. I was visiting with, with, uh, with Adele and Marty um, this week, just talking about the service and getting ready. And I, and I thought I remembered this, but I asked, I said, because I always like to ask family to fill in the, the, I forget stuff. And so I said, remind me, what was her career? They said, oh, we were, we were her career. <laughs> And, and I think Marty then said, and she worked hard. <laughs> but uh, goodness, what a godly and noble and honorable career. Homemaker. Yes, one who makes a home. Not, not house builder. Not brick mason, not architect, homemaker, one who with laughter and with stories and with dancing and with being from the Delta with cooking, who makes a home. For you and I know a home is not your house. Your house is the place where your mail gets sent. You know, your house is where the bill collectors, collectors come looking for you. But your home is where you come and you kick your shoes off. And you drink your tea. And you breathe. Because you're safe. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to impress the neighbors. You get to just breathe. Because your home Miss Martha was a homemaker. She made a home in Itabina. She made a home here. And the thing about her homemaking was that she was always welcoming new, new strays into the home. Adopted children. I got to spend some time with her Saturday and Sunday rather. And it was, it was good to be with her again in her presence. And I always felt like I had a home there. She so loved her family. And we say that all the time. And we always mean that. But in a special 
and in a unique way that was her, she not only said it, she exemplified it, and she lived it. The holiest institution that God created for us as human beings is the family. And I don't know anyone that I've ever met who better, more perfectly, more graciously, more humbly lived out that gift of family than Miss Martha. And that's the beautiful thing about the Christian life. You know, what does Jesus call us? Brothers and sisters. You know why? Calls our family. The, the epistle writes, Oh, what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called the sons and the daughters of God. See, just like Miss Martha, God's kingdom's always growing. And God's family's always growing. And there's this um, beautiful image in Scripture, particularly in the book of Revelation, where you see when Christ returns and the new Jerusalem comes down from the sky, there's this beautiful image of the wedding feast and of the table and how we'll all gather around God's table together as all of his children. And we'll have a big family reunion. We'll have a big family feast to honor the marriage of the, of the lamb and his bride, the church. And what's beautiful is that we'll all get to experience that. But what's really cool is that Miss Martha's gotten there early. Because, yeah, she was a homemaker and she loved her family. But y'all, she was also from the Delta. Okay? I, I know the Delta. Those are my people. And I always tell folks there's two types of folks in the world. There's those that love the Delta and those that don't understand the Delta. That, that's the way it is. And I love the Delta. So yes, we can talk about her sweet nature and we can talk about her love. But y'all, if there was a meal coming up, she's working. Because she's going to make sure it's done right. So Jesus might have some help right now. Getting ready for the marriage feast of the Lamb. Because she knows one day her kids, her grandkids, and all her family is going to join her at that feast. And if we know her, it's going to be done upright. And just think, she left Mr. George up there for those years by himself. There is no telling what trouble he's done got into in these years. If not for the grace of Jesus, she, he might already kicked him out. So now she's there and he'll behave right when she's watching. But a, a beautiful reunion has already happened, hadn't it? And so Paul says in the word that we do not grieve as those who have no hope. He doesn't say we don't grieve because of course we grieve. Because our life is diminished. You know, our life's a little bit more sad. Our life's a little bit more lonely. Our life is a little bit less filled with joy. So, of course, we grieve, but our grief is not for Miss Martha because she's with the Lord. She's with Mr. George. They're back together. Our grief is not for her, but our grief is for us because our life is diminished and our life is different. And we're the ones that go on. And so as we go forward, we, we, you know, we have to live out the virtues that she taught us and showed us and modeled for us. In a world, y'all, that's far too busy. She kind of rejected that business, didn't she? And focused on her family. That's a good example for all of us. Every one of us. To maybe reject the rat race that this world's calling us to and to focus on something eternal like family. We always got time for an extra dance, don't we, too? We have inherited this mantle, inherited this beautiful life, inherited this joy from her. You know, it's our job moving forward to live that out with her grace, with her dignity, with her love, with her love for family. She has shown us through all that she was the path that God, I think, has designed for his children. What an example 
What a legacy. What a joy. So yeah, we grieve. And God acknowledges our grief. He acknowledges our human loss. But he reminds us of that wedding feast that's coming. One day, we'll be with her. And one day, we'll be together. And one day, we'll be celebrating and dancing. And until that time comes, let's live out that hope together. And let's thank God for her life. And as Sally said, Sally, we know her as Bam. <laughs> as Sally said, let's live that out and inherit that and do our best to live out her grace and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, from here forward. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for Miss Martha's life. God, we thank you for, Father, the privilege that we've all had of getting to know her, to getting to experience her goodness and mercy. God, to getting to experience her grace. So, Father, as we live, as we grieve, we pray now for your mercy upon all of us now who grieve. But we thank you for her life that in your love will never die. So, Father, we ask you to comfort the brokenhearted, to remind all of us of the gift of resurrection, to turn our sorrow into hope. And yes, weeping may come in the night, but joy cometh in the morning. So, God, make us have joy, even now in the tears. For we know that you're good. We know that, God, she has heard what we all long to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant. We thank you for her life. We love you. And we ask this this morning, O oh God, not in our name. We ask in the name of the one who taught us to pray as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So through the grace of God, may we go forth now living out a beautiful, joyous life in the same way that Martha did. Loving each other, loving our family, looking for the best exemplifying kindness, living, loving, laughing boldly in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.